I hope you enjoyed our worship experience. We always try to create opportunities for you to have an encounter with God. This past week, my father-in-law, Pastor Marlinda's dad, slipped into the arms of Jesus. He'd been ill for a number of months, and he passed away. We've communicated it among the leadership team, and I'm now telling you because you're part of my family, and so I wanted to share that with you. So please keep us in your prayers. And I've chosen to take this time to speak to you and this method in terms of not only to our online campus, but to Christ Church Clifton, Christ Church Montclair, and Christ Church Rockaway, because I'm now in South Carolina helping to eulogize my father-in-law. So thank you for your care for me and your openness to allowing this ministry time to be by way of technology. I want to take some time and walk you through something that's very important. It's been burning my heart for weeks, and it's right at the forefront of our 40-day spiritual journey, which begins on Monday, themed, renewed. So let's pray together, and then I'll jump right into the scripture. Father, thank you so much for how you love us. Thank you for your care. Thank you for my spiritual family. I pray that this word revolutionizes all of us. In Christ's name, amen. My topic today is the fire of God. The American church, as you may have noticed, is in a great place of dryness. And you may be feeling a sense of dryness or lukewarmness, apathy and complacency. It can happen to anybody. But what we need is for God to renew us. 474 times in the Bible we see the word fire. And we also see this phrase, fire of God. That captures moments when God wants to demonstrate His power and His presence. And so He either shows up in fire or causes fire to take place or a fire to burn in our hearts so that we can be able to be on fire for Him. In fact, think about it. Remember the burning bush experience that Moses experienced? God spoke from within the burning bush. We somehow have a God who wraps himself around fire. The fire of God speaks of enthusiasm and excitement and zeal and passion. And so the idea is for you to become someone who is on fire for God. The theme of the fire of God is throughout Scripture. In Exodus 19, verse 10, it reads, And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. Because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Now let's go to verse 18 to see when God comes down. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke. Because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. And the whole mountain trembled violently. I want you to see there God wrapped fire around himself. He came down on Mount Sinai in fire. Why is the Bible always speaking about God in fire? It's not just in that passage. You'll find it also in Exodus 13, 21. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or night. The Lord was leading His ancient people by a pillar of fire. And I want you to see, He leads us today, His modern day people, by allowing the fire of the Holy Spirit, the zeal of God, the enthusiasm of the Lord to be within us. And so we can be able to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. And so I want to encourage you that as I teach today, at the end of my teaching time, Christ Church, Clifton, Montclair, and Rockaway, and you watching online, I want you to know by the end of my teaching time, I'm going to ask God to baptize you in the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of God is not just an Old Testament metaphor. In the New Testament, in Revelation 1, we see it. Verse 12, 
I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands were someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing water. I want you to see John the Apostle captured this image of Jesus, and there we see this recurring theme of fire in connection with who God is and certainly who the Son of God is. So what we must understand when we catch a glimpse of God is this. God is a consuming fire. The Bible describes God that way. In Exodus 24 verse 17, to the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. See, when you think and hear about the word glory or the glory of God, it is the abiding, manifested presence of God. God says, when I show up, I show up with fire. I show up with enthusiasm, zeal, power, this excitement. I want you to see that when you walk with Jesus that, and you walk closely to Him, the one who, with fiery eyes, the one whose feet have been, are, are in the bronze as if they're in a furnace, that God that we serve, when you walk closely with Jesus, he burns up complacency in your heart. He burns up ap apathy in your heart. He burns up lukewarmness in your heart because we serve a God who's a consuming fire. Zechariah 2 verse 5 affirms this. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it. It is the city of Jerusalem, declares the Lord. And I will be its glory within. So God again points to the fact that His glory is a shield and safeguard around us or His fire is a shield and safeguard around us. And God wants to make sure as you are someone who's walking with God that the coldness of your heart, the zeal of the Lord, the fire of God will burn away coldness of heart and burn away complacency of heart. I want you to understand we serve a God that is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12 verse 29 puts it this way, for our God is a consuming fire. So I want you to see this metaphor of fire. It's spoken of in its affectionate way when it comes to God and His people. And may you be someone that not only understands that our God is a consuming fire, but may you be someone that wants to experience the fire of God. May I also share with you that God answers by fire. We're going to camp out here for a great deal of time because I want to see God answer your prayers with fire. In fact, I want to set up the passage of Scripture that's found in 1 Kings 18 dealing with Elijah and the false prophets or the prophets of Baal. The setting was Elijah was so incensed and impassioned about the fact that the nation of Israel had turned wayward. They've become so dull and dry and despondent about the things of God that Elijah, when he pressed into God in prayer, God spoke to him and said, I want you to utter a command over the nation. And Elijah did. And he said, there shall be no rain in this nation until I say so. For three years, no rain. Famine ensued. The king at the time was a wicked king, Ahab. And Ahab put a hit out on Elijah. He tried to find him. Having people sent to different nations, God hid Elijah from this wicked king. No harm came. At the end of three years, God told Elijah, go and reveal yourself now and call for a showdown on Mount Carmel. And so that's exactly what Elijah did. Elijah told King Ahab, you bring all the prophets of Baal. There are 450 of them. Meet me on Mount Carmel. Bring the nation with you because there we're going to choose who we're going to serve. Either we're going to serve God or we're going to serve Baal. 
there must come a time when you decide either you're going to be on fire for God or you're going to be complacent and live it like that or be cold and distant. But I want you, you can't have one foot in complacency and one foot in a desire for the fire of God and live that way. It doesn't work that way. I want you to recognize God is calling our church every campus, Clifton, Montclair, Rockaway. God is calling us to be able to be a church that understands that He answers by fire. And I want you to see what Elijah did there on Mount Carmel. In fact, when it came to Mount Carmel, we see even archaeologists, they discovered how these individuals were prophets of Baal. Baal was a, an idolatrous figure. It was considered the fertility god, god of the earth or lord of the earth because the word Baal means lord. So they were saying lord of the earth. That means he's Lord over the sun, Lord over the rain, Lord over nature, and certainly Lord over fire. And so Elijah said, okay, you think that Baal is Lord? You think that that's supreme? Let's meet on Mount Carmel. Historians tell us that on Mount Carmel, there was a temple that was established for the worship of Baal. Elijah said, let's meet on your home turf. And I want you then to see who is really God, either God the one the only God, or Baal is God. Let me pick up the verse at eight, chapter, 1 Kings 18, verse 21. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, follow Him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I'm the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves. And let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire on it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Verse 24. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Elijah was very clear. He said, let's not play around any longer. Either God is God or not. If God is God, serve Him. I mean, serve Him with passion. Serve Him with zeal. Serve Him with enthusiasm. If Baal, in our day, you may say, well, Baal, yeah, or if social media, if science, if you know, just entertainment, if sex, if drugs, if alcohol, if waywardness, if complacency, if that's God, serve that. But if in fact the Lord God, you know, the creator of heaven and earth, and your creator, if he is indeed God, let God answer by fire. I love this challenge. And so the false prophets, they started to cry out to Baal from morning till midday. And nothing, no, nothing happened. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Kings 18 verse 29, Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. When you read through the text, it says that Elijah started to taunt them. He said, call louder. You, maybe your God is, is asleep. Wake him up. Elijah kept on taunting them. Call louder. Maybe Baal is, he, he went away. Maybe he's you know, on holiday. Call louder. And these false prophets are cutting themselves and walking around dancing and making all kinds of incantations thinking that that would evoke Baal. No such thing, Baal. In fact, Elijah said, call louder. Maybe he is taking rest, which in the Hebrew means maybe he's in the bathroom. Maybe he's relieving himself. And nothing happened. Elijah then says, my turn. And I want you to understand, when we talk about the fire of God, I'm talking about you going before the Lord and saying, God, my turn to ask you to do mighty things. My turn to seek your face. My turn to engage in faith. My turn to pursue you in powerful prayers. I want you to see the God that we serve not only is a consuming fire, He answers by fire. But let me read the text so you can see what God did. Verse 36. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I'm your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, 
Answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. What an amazing time. I want you to know that we're in a season as a church community where we need to start praying bold prayers. We're living in a day and age where Christianity is looked at in this negative way, looked down upon. And we're living in a day and age where many of our contemporaries, many Christ followers, they've become lukewarm and complacent, apathetic. And I want to issue a challenge to you and to all of the Christ church community that we would go on this 40-day journey titled Renewed that's starts on Monday, that we would go before God and say, God, I'm coming before you so I can have you answer by fire. Fire up my heart so I can pray fiery prayers. Fire up my heart so I can be able to pursue you. And may I say, why not issue a challenge in settings like your workplace, in your home, on your job? Sometimes people are sitting there saying they're ambivalent. Do I serve God or don't serve God? Because their knowledge of God is wrapped around complacency. Their knowledge of God is wrapped around apathetic people. Their knowledge of God is because they've witnessed people that compromise their faith. One foot in the church, one foot in the world, no difference between how they behave. What people need to see are authentic men and women, people like you and like me that bring our situation and bring our circumstance on our Mount Carmel and said, God, answer by by fire. God, show up today and do great and mighty things. I want you to see we serve a God who's not intimidated intimidated by this world. He's not intimidated by the challenges that we face. He's not intimidated by the societal ills. He's not intimidated by all the brokenness in our society. What God is looking for are men and women like you and like me, simple men and women who are willing to get baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit so we can turn our world upside down. May I say to you, Christ Church Clifton, it's time for you to turn Clifton upside down. Montclair, it's time for you to turn Montclair upside down. Christ Church Rockaway, it's time for you to turn Mon- to turn Rockaway upside down. And you watching online, it's time for you to seize your community for God. Have you considered a prayer drive? Drive through your city, praying for your city, praying that those who are shackled to hopelessness, shackled to despair, shackled with depression, that shackles be broken off of them. Pray for the economy of your city. Pray for the welfare of your city. God is looking for the Elijahs of today to step up on Mount Carmel, to go even into the camp of the enemy, and right there where it's home court advantage, God is coming down in fire. And that's what He does. He answers by fire. And I thank God for the boldness and the courage of the prophet Elijah. May you also be filled with boldness and courage and confidence so you can see God is not afraid to douse us in the fire of the Holy Spirit and empower us in the fire of the Spirit so we can do great and mighty things for God. Go ahead and give the Lord a shout of praise. We serve a God who's powerful. I love what pastor and author Tommy Tinney said. Fire doesn't fall on empty altars. There has to be a sacrifice on the altar for the fire to fall. If you want the fire of God, you must become the fuel of God. I mentioned that on Monday we're going on this 40-day spiritual journey that we've titled Renewed. I want you to register for this journey because it's free, but I want you to register. Why? Because I want to give you access to free stuff that can help fuel you and empower you. And the best way to give, give it to you, because it's a soft copy of a book called Lectures on Revival and lots of other goodies. But I want you to see that what we're doing as a family is that we recognize that we need to be the altar where God can show up on and God can emblazon our hearts. And this is why it's so critical. When we go on this 40-day spiritual journey, every day, thousands 
thousands of people are crying out to God. Every day, thousands of people are fasting for your breakthrough. Every day, people are fasting for you to get renewed. Every day, we're fasting for God to show up and do great things in our church and throughout our region and our community. We recognize that smart people can't change the world, but Holy Spirit empowered fire emblazoned people can change the world i love the fact that when we look at history of of the book of acts in acts chapter 2 120 men and women who got filled with the fire of the holy spirit baptized in the fire of the holy spirit they turned the world upside down And we have far more than 120 men and women. And I want you to know that if you would allow God to capture your heart, we serve a God who's a consuming fire. And we serve a God who answers by fire. And that day when Elijah called fire down, God heard, responded, and fire fell, burned up the water, burned up the the wood, burned up the sacrifice, burned up everything on the altar, and the nation turned their hearts to God. One of the best ways to get backslidden people, wayward people, unbelieving people to find their way to the cross and to come to Christ is when you become fiery for God, when you see the need for them to be urgent, if there's an urgency in your heart for them to get saved, for them to get rededicated. It's when you as a child of God step out of complaint Step out of this place of lukewarmness and say, I want to be baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's when you get to the place where you're sick and tired of being lukewarm, sick and tired of being apathetic, sick and tired of being complacent, sick and tired of living a compromised life. When you get sick and tired of that place of apathy, God will cause fire to come down on your heart. And when you do, when that happens, give yourself to prayer, give yourself to worship, give yourself to evangelism, give yourself to you know to 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 meeting the needs of the society and the community around you and when you do that you'll be surprised how many people you win to christ you'll be surprised how your attitude will change on your job you'll be surprised how the atmosphere changes in your school you'll be surprised how the spiritual temperature changes in your home what causes change is the fire of god comes into your heart and you then begin to affect change around about you give the lord praise because he's doing a great and mighty thing in the earth today we see that not only does God not only is God a consuming fire and God answers by fire but we must also be mindful God makes you flames of fire that's what he promised us in Matthew 3 verse 11 we see the promise of scripture I baptize you this is John the Baptist speaking I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who's more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's the promise. The passage of Scripture says that God promised you to baptize you in fire. Baptize, the Greek word baptizo, to immerse, to submerge, God will say, I'm going to put you into the fire. The fire won't harm you. The fire will help you. The fire won't burn you. The fire will empower you. The fire won't scar you. The fire will captivate your heart. And so here, the promise of Scripture, God is not a man that he lies. God is not someone who needs to repent. God doesn't have to say, oops. I want you to see God promises you to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You don't have to live a life of complacency and compromise, not any longer. You can be renewed and refreshed. And Hebrews 1 verse 7 reaffirms God's promise to make you a flame. It says in speaking of the angels, He, God, says He makes His angels spirits and His servants flames of fire. That's my cry for you. That's my prayer for me, that God may make you, me, His servants, flames of fire. I want you to know that to get flames of fire, you must spend extended times in prayer. You must spend extended times in fasting. Ask God to 
to, to baptize you in fire. Ask God to drive out the dryness of your heart and to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Spend some extended times in prayer. Why not take your lunch break and maybe go outside and walk when if you're at work where you can walk, if you're at home, maybe walk around the block or if you have a treadmill, walk on a treadmill and spend that time praying and saying, God, do it again. Do something in my heart. Cause my heart to be doused with the gasoline of heaven, with the fuel of heaven to ignite a spark. See, the goal is when you get excited for God, things happen. There's not a history book in America that doesn't reflect the Second Great Awakening. There in the 1800s, when revival burned across the eastern seaboard and across the country, revival or renewal where God visits His people and turns their hearts towards Him, not in a one-day thing, but in a protracted, extended, multi-year experience, it caused the birth of schools like Princeton, Harvard, Yale, many of these schools and universities that we know of today that were started because simple men and women got on their faces and cried out to God, and God poured out His Spirit and revival occurred, and then these institutions sprung up to train people for ministry. These institutions veer off course now. That's why I'm encouraging you. Why not? Let's go before the God of fire and say, God, do it again. Answer by fire and make me a flame of fire. I want you to see how God wants to do it. I love what Samuel Chadwick said, the 20th century pastor and preacher. Spirit-filled souls are ablaze for God. They love with a love that glows. They serve with a faith that kindles. They serve with a devotion that consumes. They hate sin with fierceness that burns. They rejoice with a joy that radiates. Love is perfected in the fire of God. Question, what would happen if you caught on fire? What would happen if you caught on fire for God? Clifton, you would pack out that theater where people are hungry for Jesus. Montclair, even though we're going through the refreshing of the bathrooms and the stage, people would come anyway, and they'll they'll pack out the cathedral. Rockaway, they'll pack out this complex that was the former Hewlett-Packard location. I want you to see we serve a God that is visiting people and you online, in your home, and in your city, what would happen if you caught on fire for God? Your family and this generation, I believe, will be transformed. I want to pray now for the fire of God to fall. And if you have time in your schedule, why not stop over at our Rockaway campus on Friday evenings, starting Friday the 24th, We're going to be having an evening of renewal, time of prayer and fasting, time of worship and preaching. We're going to coming, we're coming before God to say, God, let fire fall on our hearts. So if you can make it at 730 Friday evening, be a part of our time together and bring a friend, but come thirsty. I want you to see today, bow your heart with me all over, all over our community the fire of the Lord. I want to pray for that to come upon you. Father, I ask that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall at Christ Church Clifton. I pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall at Christ Church Montclair. God, that place we have done so many things over the decades that we've owned that cathedral. I pray, Lord, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall at Rockaway and fall on the hearts of everybody watching online around the world. Burn up the dryness of our hearts. Burn out the complacency of our souls. Capture our hearts once again. Mesmerize us with your beauty. God, do it again. Change us in the name of Jesus the Savior of the world. Amen.
I pass it to the campus pastor. Back to you. For you watching online, if you've never before prayed to give your heart to Jesus, may I lead you in this relationship with God? Right where you are, would you pray with me this prayer? It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer requesting God's great forgiveness. Repeat after me this prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender to you. Forgive me of my sins. Wash them away. Change me. And help me to serve you, Lord Jesus, every day of my life, starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Please follow the instruction on the screen. On, on the screen, if you prayed with me to give your heart to Christ, we want to help you grow in this relationship with God. We have some free stuff to give you to anchor this decision. God bless you. Have a great week in serving Jesus.